Welcome to Life Devotions, and thank you for joining me today. God's love perfected in me. You know, God wants us all to come to maturity. He wants us all to come to the fullness of the stature of the knowledge of His Son. I know such thoughts can be so hard for our human nature to accept for ourselves because we have little cliches that say, nobody's perfect, we all make mistakes. And, and, and I don't always appreciate that statement. I understand, so I'm not harsh against it, but, but folks, it's not healthy to talk that way. Look what it says here in verse um, 13 of Ephesians 4 till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. I have my little Bible here, if I can find it. There it is, sorry about this. And if I read that to you from the classic Amplified, right? Listen to this, 4 verse 13, here it is. He says that we, that it might develop until we all attain oneness in the faith and in the comprehension of the full accurate knowledge of the Son of God that we might arrive at a really mature manhood, the completeness of personality, which is nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, the completeness found in Him. And then in chapter 2 of Colossians, verse 9 and 10, For in Him, in Christ, the whole fullness of the deity that God had continues to dwell in bodily form, giving complete expression of the divine nature, and you are in him made full, having come the fullness of life in Christ. You too are filled with the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, and reach full spiritual stature. I know that when we hear these thoughts, we turn it off sometimes because it seems impossible. And of course it is impossible. It is absolutely impossible. But what is impossible with man, Jesus said in Mark 10, is possible with God. God is able to bring you into a maturity, into a fullness of His love. And yes, as you keep maturing and growing in the knowledge of the height, the depth, the breadth and length of His love, and begin to experience that love that far, far surpasses your ability to comprehend mentally, and you begin to live in the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints in the light, as Colossians 2.10 talks about. You begin to experience that incredible glory to which we're all predestined and to which we're called you will realize that it is from everlasting to everlasting, immeasurable. And yet you come to fullness. How can I come to fullness and to full maturity of something that's immeasurable? It is that you are found in Him, complete, lacking nothing. That He is all in all. That is the end and the beginning. And God wants to per us to be perfected in His love. God's love perfected in me. He wants us to be perfected in His love. So I'm going with you to Matthew chapter 5, verse 38. Matthew 5, verse 38. Okay, and we'll read here for a little bit, 10 verses. Jesus says here, Now you've heard that it was said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not to resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on the, your right cheek, turn the other to him also. And if anyone wants to sue you <coughs> and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you 
and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. You have heard it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. Again, I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you. Yes, love your neighbor and hate. You know that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes the sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and he sends his rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward is that to you? Do, you? do you not know that even tax collectors do the same? If you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even tax collectors do so. Listen to this. Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. God would bring us into such a place, friends, where we're no longer limited by self, but that we live in the unlimited resource of our Father enabling us to love as He loves, to bless as He bless. God would have you live in this place. One man, I said to him, I love you, when he had really done bad, really bad. And he said, Pastor, how can you say you love me knowing what I've done? I said, I can only say that to you because the love I feel for you comes straight from the heart of the Lord Jesus. You see, friends, if we live within the limits of our own, we will not represent the Father. We'll fail, we'll fall short. But if God, if you would like to live beyond your own limits, then you're going to have to abide in God, is what I talked about yesterday. And you're going to have to let yourself be perfected in His love. He's got to dig you deeper when you're too shallow, when you're too quickly irritated and offended. And that digging often comes through circumstances in life that's not easy where you go through some pain. I remember one man, oh, how I love that precious man, but how he pulled and pulled and pulled away. And it, and the experience of it was, was so forceful in me. And I remember one time when he was pulling away and the pain of him pulling away was tearing me up inside. And I kept weeping for him and praying and weeping and praying and weeping and praying for him. And all of a sudden, this incredible, heavenly, holy rest flooded my being and all the pain dissipated away in that perfect rest and this perfect love, this perfected love of the Father flooded me from above. And I was just totally quiet. And when I walked into the meeting, which was the next thing that happened, I began to preach. This love poured out of me and people in the congregation started howling and howling as they began weeping, feeling loved with his love. And I tell you, God would perfect his love in you in a way that maybe, yeah. I don't know about you, but I want it. And I embrace everything that provides sorrow and I embrace everything that provides pain. That is what the Lord is trying to show you here. When they push you to go a mile, let it bring you to a place where you can go too. When they take away your coat, let it bring you to the place you could give away your, your shirt. You see, so many times when things are taken, when things are pushed, it can open the door of that love in us when it hurts us, when it pushes us, when it strains us, that we begin to experience this incredible love. That is really what I believe the Lord is teaching us here. That you, when you're hated and it so wounds you, so wounds you that 
and you will weep and pray for them that this incredible love begins to come for the one who age. When they curse you and they bite you and it afflicts you and you begin to pray for them, this, this blessing towards them comes out of you that is just overwhelming. When they persecute you and causes you suffering, that this love begins to manifest in you from the Father. And I tell you the truth, I believe in what I'm showing you. Which brings me to Philippians chapter 1, which is a scripture that I pray often, verse 19 and 20. For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ according to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed of, but with all boldness as always. So now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or death, whether I die or live. You see, did I say it right? Whether I, life or death. I believe that God can have you in such a place of prayer with him that when you suffer and it causes you pain, this love begins to manifest and you're perfected in the perfect love. That perfect love begins to unveil in you. This perfect love that conquers hate, that conquers curses, that conquers any suffering or hardships and causes you to be more than a conqueror in the middle of this. Romans 8, 35 talks about this. And that you live in this all conquering merciful love, that you're perfected in this love and that you don't have to be ashamed that you go like, oh, oh, why did I get angry? I ruined it all. Why did I allow that to offend me? I ruined it all. Why did I speak so harshly? I ru no more that know the opposite, the meekness of that perfect love that we see in Jesus, that gentle forbearingness that we see in Jesus of that perfect love begins to unveil in you and it causes grace to come in a situation that you could not see in any other way. Colossians chapter 1 verse 28, please. Him, Christ, we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. I tell you, if you allow yourself to be influenced by the word that leads to Christ, reveals Christ, unveils Christ, and you keep meditating on it and thinking on it, and especially Andrew Murray's books for me are the key inspiration, holiness, the humility, the beauty of holiness, the, inter, the inner man, or, or the holiest of all, or abiding Christ, and all these incredible books that he has, humility. Oh, I love his, his uh, humility, the beauty of holiness is only 12 little chapters. The book of humility is, is, is a bit bigger, but it is heavenly, heavenly. And if we allow ourselves to be inspired by this and we allow ourselves to live in a place of prayer, he says here in Colossians 4 verse 12, Ephraim, who is one of you, a bond servant of Christ, greets you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. I believe in this. I believe in this for myself, but for my wife, my children, grandchildren, for the congregation, for people anywhere and everywhere, that through prayer, as he says in Philippians 1.19, through your prayers and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, I have this confident expectation that in nothing I will be ashamed of myself, but that Christ will be magnified in my body. And he says that he's praying, Ephraim is praying for you constantly that you stand complete and perfect in Christ. So let me give you my last scripture. It is here in 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. Here it is. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, be holy, for I'm holy. Pastor, do you truly think 
that I can be completely holy in my conduct by the Spirit and the power of God, yes. There is no holiness apart from His humility. There is no holiness apart of His love. It's not possible because God is holy and there's none holy but the Lord. And how can we enjoy that experience of His perfect righteousness and love that is the display that is displayed in the perfection of His holiness. Unless we know that humility that Christ imparts by which we submit ourselves to the loving Father and that love enjoyed to be fully convinced of His perfect love and we begin to enjoy this holiness because we just have this absolute trueness of heart and sincerity of faith a heart that's sprinkled from an evil conscience and a body that's continuously washed by the pure water of the Holy Spirit that we, with a clear conscience, are able to enjoy the perfections of His holiness and live in that perfected love for one another. Friends, there is glory for you and me today that God so longs to reveal. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 verse 4 that God longs to be merciful to us so that he might satisfy the great love he feels for us. And today God wants to reveal his holiness afresh and anew in his church to the whole world. And that holiness is not to condemn the world, but to attract it like a bright shining light in the darkness of this world to say, oh, you sorrow, oh, you that sorrow and all you sighing and dying humanity come to the mercies that never fail. And that the church again becomes that incredible embracing love of the Father perfected, perfected for what? For those who hate for those who curse, for those who are cruel, and for those that are abusive in, the, in, in their lifestyle, that they can come and be washed and forgiven and healed in the congregation of the Holy Ones. Amen. Have a good day.